Hey everyone, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to take a look at using the for each zone in geometry nodes to be able to scatter a bunch of objects around a space, but having these objects be generated by other geometry node trees. And so you can get randomized node trees within a space. So let's jump right into this video. Okay, so to start, I've got this simple uh, candle geometry node, and um, there's nothing super special about it, and it's not all that great a node, but the idea behind it is simply that I can change the radius of the candle, and I can change the height of the candle, as well as the material of the wax and of the fire. This node will be in the source file when I post this to my Patreon. Um, you can check that out if you want. But the building of the candle really isn't important to this particular technique we're going to do. Uh, really, this could be any object that you're going to want to scatter around an area. So let's go ahead and start scattering it. I'm going to move this candle out of the way. And this is going to be the area where we want to scatter some things. So I'm going to add a node tree to uh, this object. And let's go ahead and scatter some points on this plane. So to do that, we're going to use the uh, distribute points on faces node. And that will simply take the mesh that we have and on each of its faces, it'll spread some points. Um, we're going to use the uh, Poisson disk method. So the nice thing about this method is that we can set a minimum distance between the points and um, then this way we've got a little more control once we start adding candles um, so that they're not all clumped together and overlapping. Uh, we've got a little bit more control over that. Now that we have this, um, we're gonna go ahead and on each of these points, we're going to instance a candle. Now this is where this technique breaks off from previous geometry nodes before we had the for each zone because we could simply because before we could instance a candle on each of these points. Uh, let me show you. If I do an instance on points node, and then for my uh, candle, add in an object info node, plug that into the instance, and then use my candle, you'll see that we have a bunch of candles. The problem is, is that we're instancing these as uh, identical copies of one another. So I would have to go to that original candle. And if I made any changes to it, it's going to change all of the candles. What we want is some randomness in the sizes of the candle. So one thing we could do then is take several of these candle objects, make them all slightly different, and then put them in a collection. Then we could use the pick instance setting here uh, from the instance on points node to pick items from that collection. So if we had 10 different candle sizes in there, it could go ahead and pick from those 10. Now that's fine. Um, and that, that could work, but what if whatever you're working on needs more randomness than just putting in five or 10 different candles, you're going to want something quite a bit more extensive. That's one place we could use this for each zone. So I'm going to remove this object info node and the instance on points node. And what we're going to do is add a for each zone and we'll connect it up like this. Now the for each zone is what's called a parallel zone, which means that for each uh, element, and in this case, we're going to work with points, but you can work with points, edges, faces, face corners, splines, instances, and layers. You've got quite a bit of access there. For each of those, it's going to do something to each one of them in parallel. Um, so they're not gonna affect each other, each of these elements. Um, they're each gonna take their own path through this zone. Then whatever gets connected to the geometry output here gets all recombined as the output of the for each zone. So what we want to do is we want to take information from each of these points and then transfer it over to our candles. 
And the information that we want is actually the position of each one of these points. Now, we're not going to connect these points to the output. If we did that, we'd simply end up with all these points again. But we're really not looking for uh, points. We're looking for candles. So I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to add my candle node. And since this is already in my file, um, since I appended this to my file, uh, it's here in my search. So whatever node you're adding that generates something, you're going to want to add that here. And what we can see with this uh, candle node is that if I connect it here, I get one massive candle. And actually, we've got for as many points as we had, we've got that many massive candles because my radius and height are set here to really large defaults. So maybe my uh, radius is going to be um, one inch and then my height is going to be four inches. So that's a, more, uh, a little more realistic. Now I want to place each of these candles at one of the positions of those points. So really what we're going to do is we're going to offset the geometry of each of these candles to those points. So let's go ahead and do that. And uh, for that, we'll use a set position node. And then we will use the offset here to determine how far to move each one of the candles. But how do we get the offset of each one of these points? Well, coming into our for each element zone here, we have the element. And so what that means is that that one element, whether it's a point or an edge or a face or whatever, has been pulled out of the full geometry and served up as a geometry element that just contains that one thing. So if you're talking about a point, it's going to be one point. It'll be at index zero and uh, within that element geometry here. But we also have the index of where it's coming from, from the main geometry as well, if we need that information. So if we take this element and we use a sample index node, this is going to let us pull out one value from this geometry. What we'll see here is that um, because we only have one point in this particular uh, loop for each zone, the index is going to be zero. There are no other indexes past that. Now, the thing we want to sample is the position of that point. So we'll change the type here to vector, and then we'll add the position node. So what we're seeing here is that we've split off each point to its own geometry, and now we're sampling the position from each of those points, and that's this output here. So if I now plug this into the offset for each candle, you'll see now that I have all of my points represented with a candle. But here's where this can get really interesting. Because this candle is being generated within each loop, we can change the settings for each candle, even though, as you can see, the inputs for the settings for the candle, the radius and the height here, are single values. Um, and that's just because of the way the candle uh, object works is that it only makes one candle. It doesn't make a pile of candles. So we don't have a field input for the radius and the height. We have a single input because it outputs a single candle. But now here inside of this for each zone, we're just creating one candle and that's fine. And if we have a way to create a separate radius and height within this, um, for each pass through the for each zone, we can have each candle that's created have some different values. One way we could do that is with the uh, random value node. If I plug the random value node into the radius, you'll see that I get an invalid link. And that's because the value here is a field. This is creating uh, values across the entire geometry set, or it's trying to. And, but the radius here wants a single value. That's where the ID field 
for the random value comes in handy. Now this is where uh, the random value node is, is pretty interesting because the random value node is what's called a pseudo random number generator. And that's saying that if this ID field is the same and I put the seed at zero, it's going to create a randomly generated list of numbers. But if that ID and seed are the same, it's going to create the same set of random numbers. And if I give it an ID and a, and a seed, it's going to generate me one random number for each ID. So what I can do here is if I plug this index, which is a single value, into the ID, now all of a sudden you'll see that my value output of the random value node has turned into a single value, this round socket rather than the diamond shaped socket. And the seed is just set at a single value. Um, and I can change this and it will change the random values that are being generated for each one of these. And for each point, I'm, I've got a different index. So this makes it really nice that I can generate all of these different random numbers. Let's give the uh, random value here a little more uh, appropriate min and max. So you can see here already we're getting some size variation in the diameters of the candles. Um, and we could bump this up more if we wanted to. Uh, but maybe not that much. So now we have a lot of different values for our candle radiuses. And we can do the exact same thing for our heights. We'll take the index again and we'll plug the output value into the height. And then we'll adjust our values here. Now we've already said that uh, if we've got the same ID and the same seed, we're gonna get the same random numbers. So actually each of our candles here is getting a similar height and radius. And you'll notice the taller the candles are, the thicker they are. So that's really not what we're looking for. So if we give the height a different seed, it's going to get a different set of random numbers to go along with each ID. So now, because these seeds are different, we can have tall candles that are thin and short candles that are thick and vice versa and anywhere in between. Now I simply would need to uh, select my materials for my candle. Um, I will do wax and fire, which I already had in this file. And let's take a look at this. I'm going to jump over to the Polyhaven library here to just get a ground texture uh, for these to sit on. And what's great about this now is if I wanted to adjust how the candles were being generated um, and maybe have some up on a little platform or something, I could create that platform, duplicate this face, Now you might see that uh, my movements are pretty slow here, um, and that's because I'm creating a lot of geometry because I've got a subdivision surface on each one of these candles, and I really haven't optimized uh, the output on these candles, so I'm generating a lot of geometry here. While that's fine, um, it really makes it sluggish when I start to try to work with it. So let's see one way we could optimize this or at least make this more user friendly. What I'm going to do is give us an option in the modifier to be able to shut off the generation of the candles. And instead of giving us the candles, just give us the points that the candles are going to be at. And we can do that really simply if we add a switch node. And we're going to put that here before the output of the for each element zone. Now we're going to connect this to the true, so when uh, candles is on, they'll be generated. But when it's off, all we want to do is take that original point and output it. 
and then we can take this switch and connect it to our original node tree. I'll open my side panel and uh, rename this socket to make candles. So now I can switch these on and off. And when they're off, those candles aren't going to be generated. So I should be able to move these around quite easily now with, without any kind of trouble because all they are are uh, distributing the points on the faces. And once I've got those put where I want them, and maybe I want to stretch these ones out a bit too, I can go ahead and turn make candles back on. And I have my setup. So this is one way you can use the for each element zone to use geometry nodes that generate a single object and then have them run in a different way for a bunch of different points. Now, of course, these don't have to be generated points. These could be a simple mesh that you've created and just using the points of that mesh or a curve or really whatever uh, you want that's generating points. You could have those points turn into the locations of whatever you want to generate. So I know this one was pretty simple, but I think this is a really effective uh, tool that you can use when you need to scatter things around, give them some randomness, and um, and of course you could tweak this however you wanted and add additional randomness. Of course, I could change the size of the flame. Um, I could affect the materials. I could do a whole lot of other things and um, add to this scene instead of just the width and the height of the candles. So I hope this gets you thinking about ways you could use this technique, and I hope this video has inspired you to make something awesome. If it has, I'd ask that you go ahead and uh, subscribe to the channel, as I've got a lot of videos out there that might help you along in different parts of Blender. You can get the source files for this project by subscribing to my Patreon. The link for that will be down in the description. So that's it for now. Until next time, I'll catch you later.